Hey everyone, how's it going? Pixel Scene. In today's video, I'm giving you my first ever demon build on Evil Dead the game. So you will have to bear with me a little bit. I don't know every single in and out of demon. You know, some of you might watch this build and be like, oh, what are you putting points into that for? Um, just understand that I don't put a lot of time into demon. However, when I have been running this build, I've found it very successful. You know, I have been wiping teams out with this build as well. I've really, really enjoyed running this build and playing ball. You know, I'm not usually a demon player. Uh, but like I said, if it works out well for me and you guys are experienced, it's going to work out great for you, honestly. Um, but anyways, let's jump straight into this. So, you know, I will kind of break down a little few things and my like the reason why I chose this perk and why I think it works out great for this character. But I will do first is obviously look through his skills and I'll kind of, you know, break them down just a little bit for you guys. So you can understand the character a bit better. So uh, obviously he has Scarefest. So his active ability will automatically set down traps nearby for a limited time, including the ones that are on cooldown as well. So, you know, this is definitely going to work out great during objectives. It actually works out really well at the start of the game because you can get threat level really early just by simply... You know, pressing <laughs> pressing the active ability button and going around a bunch of traps and you know your threat level will just, you know, skyrocket really fast and you can start spending points a lot faster as well. Just make sure at the start of the game you collect quite a lot of infernal energy. You don't need a massive amount because later on down the line we're going to be putting some points into reducing the trap cost. However, you know, uh, just have a quite a, a little bit of infernal energy at the beginning of the game. Activate his ability, you'll get a lot of threat level, especially in places like Fort Go on, you know, uh, Castle Kandar. You know, areas like that that have a lot of traps. You impress his ability, you'll get a shit ton of threat level, which I w think works out really good. Uh, Mass Paranoia, I'll just explain this a little bit. So it's a secondary ability for this guy. Um, so it actually has like, he sort of has like two abilities. So one will be for putting down traps. His other ability will be for like possession. So if you're familiar with Elagos, he has like a power possess. This guy has something called mass paranoia where if you possess a unit or you possess a survivor, like all the other ones look the same as that unit. They all look possessed and, you know, it can confuse the survivors thinking, oh, which one is actually possessed, if that makes sense. So uh, it works out great. I think it's a really cool and unique ability for the character. So the next one is Manhunter. So he places down traps. It increases the demon's movement speed. Again, I think this is really good, especially early game. Trying to find the survivors really fast. I think it works great for that. So yeah, if they do trigger a trap, survivors will be marked. And obviously you can buff that up a little bit in the skill tree as well for how long they will be marked for. And they will gain quite a lot of fear. They'll obviously take some damage. And obviously the effect uh, duration as standard is at around 10 seconds. So um, the next one is Feed by Fear. The higher the survivor's fear level, the more damage they take, basically. Um, from possessed teammates and the more infernal energy, the, de the demon generates passively. Um, again, I think this is a really fun perk, um, especially with this build. I have the, the survivor's fear levels going to be quite high, so I'm easily... You know, I'm I'm easy to down people when I'm possessing the other survivors because if their if their fear level is high, they take quite a lot of damage. And obviously, you can regenerate the infernal energy per second there a little bit as well, which I think is nice. And then rabbit paranoia increase the fear level of survivors when near an active objective. I think this is really good as well because this kind of stops the the split captain type of uh, play styles because if two people are on one objective or one person started an objective by themselves their fear level is going to be high by the time you get over there just say the other three have got to do the other objective you can pull that one person off that objective easily by possessing them or you can choose to obviously go after the three you know it, it, it depends but again it's it's kind of something to combat the split capping uh, on objectives which i think is really nice but anyways let's jump straight into the build and i'll explain why i chose certain things so at the first point, we're just going to put in Gates of Hell Basic. I'm not too fond on his basics. His basics are okay. They don't do a lot of damage. Um, but yeah, I think a 5% cooldown reduction, you know, it's it's something we're going to have to go for, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I've never been a huge fan of basics on any on any of the demons, to be honest, other than Elagos Mebis. But yeah, his basics are okay. They do have potential. I just don't think it's worth specking around them too much. Uh, the next one, I'm just going to put one point into fear increase on Omen of Death. Which, again, I think it's really a really good one because, you know, if they're setting off traps, they're going to get a 10% fear increase. You can't argue, you know, let's go 15% on this. Honestly, an extra 5%, I don't think it's that worth it, if I'm being honest. I think that point is better off, you know, spent somewhere else. And um, the next one is Gates of Hell Elite. So I like to put that at 10%. Again, I don't want to go the full 15% of that, but I do want to spawn my elites quite frequently on here. And not only that, but you will obviously set down traps later on down the line where 
If you have your traps maxed out, your elites will pop out with the traps as well, which is good. Um, but just put the cooldown of Demonic Dash at 90 seconds. It's, you know, Demonic Dash is not something I like to use too much, but it's it can be really clutch having this on a little, you know, faster cooldown so that we can generate some fear, obviously get some infernal energy back as well. Um, you know, you could argue, you know, take a point out there, just buff up your elites. But honestly, I think having Demonic Dash, just have a little bit of an extra cooldown on it. I think it works out great with this, with this build. And the next one, I'm just going to put one point in the cooldown reduction on the uh, boss unit. You know, I don't... Obviously, this build's kind of spectre on my boss unit. However, I'm not the type of person, obviously, just go and spam my boss unit loads. So, you know, kind of pulling him out when I think he is needed is way better than, you know, being to just throw him out as much as possible. Um, so points can be better spent somewhere else. And the next one, I'm just going to put a point in is shoot your trap. So it reduces the amount of thermal energy required to set a trap. Again, I think this works out great with his uh, active ability, so that way... You know, it's costing less to set all the traps and the radius as well. And that way you can get threat level a lot easier early game as well. And um, the next one, we're just going to put two points into the spare fest. So increases the duration of the demon scare fest ability. Again, we want to buff this up so you can set more traps down, you know, over 20 seconds, which again, I think works out great. And of course, we got, oh, we can't go on to tier three yet. So we have to spend some more points. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I've done a demon build video. Uh, placing portals increases the demon's movement speed for a limited time. Again, I like to put that up to, you know, 10% for three seconds. You know, later on down the line, when you get him prestige, maybe you want to buff that up a little bit. I think that's a nice perk. And um, the next one, we're just going to put one point in the scarier demonic dash. So, of course, we get more fear level increase when we do the demonic dash with the demon. Um, and then we're going to come up here. I'm just going to put one point into false fingernails and we're going to put two points into thick skin. So the thick skin ability on the on the elite, I think, works out really well. Um, it makes them take a lot less damage, which is, you know, something that you want on any on any demon, to be honest. You know, taking less damage, being able to just absolutely mess up the survivors as well is great. So I put this up to six seconds. I think it works out really well. Um, so then we're going to come down here. We're going to put one point into heart pounding so it increases the damage taken by mark survivors again this could be a decent perk something later on down the line where you want to put it up to 10 percent and with some extra prestige points obviously the mark target stuff doesn't last that long but you can increase the time of that with the mark of evil uh but again i think that's for a different type of build you know if you're going to go into the whole fear side of the build you might want to start putting points into that um for me i didn't really find it that necessary to have them uh, marked a lot longer Especially for this type of build that I'm running. So the next three points we're going to put into Rocksteady Elite. I'm just going to buff up the Elite as much as possible here. And obviously give them a 20% extra balance bar. They're going to be even harder to take down. Especially since we have this ability just, you know, maxed out as long as we can. We're going to come down to here, Rocksteady Boss. We're going to increase the balance bar length of the boss unit. Three out of three. Of course, you bring it out ball. You don't want to get stunned instantly. The balance bar helps out. I mean, it does take a while to get your boss level on the threat level actually high enough so where the balance bar doesn't deplete at all um so i think early game it works out really well you can spawn in the boss you can really mess up the team that way um, and then we're going to go with speedy fingers increase the speed at which traps are set as well i really like this one because when i play demon I, I really get frustrated you know putting down traps and wasting time doing that so this guy is all about setting traps fast as possible and you know getting threat level as fast as possible that way and then you know that's going to increase the survivors fear levels and all that good stuff i think it works out great and um, so we're going to go heavy damage on the boss as well as i said we're just going to buff up this guy's damage output as much as possible because he can do a lot of damage especially with his uh health like his healing or his uh, health steal ability i think works out great with a, a good combination of going invisible uh the heavy damage on the elite as well we're going to max it out at 20 percent and we're going to put one point up here in the heavy damage on the basics. So the basics will still help out a little bit, but primarily we're going to be looking at doing the elites and the boss uh, throughout this build. The next one, we're going to put Hellraiser Elite. We're going to increase the maximum health of the elite unit. So yeah, with the combination of the balance bar buff and um, obviously the skin buff that they will get and the health buff, they're going to be very, very tanky and hard to take out. And of course, they're going to hit really hard with the buff of their damage as well. So we're going to come down here and put in two points in Mortal Invader. I thought this worked out really well, reducing the fear threshold on survivors. That way I could possess them, you know, do a bit of damage to each survivor as well. Or if I wanted to quickly unpossess them so I can gain a little bit more threat level, I thought it worked out great as well. 
Uh, of course, we're going to come down here. We're going to put Health Razor Boss into three points there. And we're going to put one point into Jump Snares. Increase the amount of fear received from Demon Traps. Again, just one point on that. I think works great. Um, you know, combined with all the other stuff, it will put the fear levels up on the survivors quite a lot. And again, you could argue if you're doing more fear oriented stuff that you could buff this up. However, you know, this is all about getting fast threat level, you know, getting the elites as fast as possible buffed up and then obviously getting ball buffed up on the on the threat level as well. So, um, you know, doing some fear stuff here and there works out great for this type of build. Um, and then we're going to come down to Relentless Evil gonna max that out obviously you want a cooldown reduction on setting down the traps doing the mass paranoia stuff i think it works out great there as well um and then we're gonna come up here we're just gonna put one point of field of fear you know further increasing the damage dealt by the schema to survivors with a higher with higher fear so um i mean what you could do is really max this out you know and go for the peekaboo and then the the hit the health steal grab which i think is a really good combination you can do a lot of damage with that however i felt like 10 percent was more than enough but this is something that again later on down the line with some prestige points we could buff up and then we're just going to put one point into each ball um perk at the end here so uh, reducing the cooldown of balls active abilities again i think that works decent for the type of build we're running at the moment mindfulness increases balls maximum health and master of horror has the fear increase as well okay so i'm going to tell you guys obviously how to upgrade your threat level a little bit um i'm not a massive expert on upgrading threat levels at all um however i feel like i can kind of give you the gist of what you should be doing and looking out for so uh, on my threat level i like to go for my traps first obviously setting down traps and then getting to the elite point on the traps. So every time you set a trap, obviously an elite pops out, which I think is good. Um, and then I start looking at doing, you know, um, portals for the basics. And then I'll do the portals for the elites. And then from there, I'll buff up possession a little bit. And then, you know, go, by then, you know, I'll just be moving between. Obviously, we want to focus on elites as much as possible. Uh, until we get a threat level 10, of course. And that way we can obviously uh, get our our boss unit into the game there. So uh, just to recap, obviously going for the traps first. And then we're going to go for the basics. Just putting one point into there. And then the elites. And then obviously moving backwards and forwards um, from possession, the basics, and the elites. But making sure that we have the elites as a priority until we can get our boss unit. And that way we, we can level up our boss unit as fast as possible. And get in that high threat level where with, with ball as well. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this build. Like I said, I haven't spent a lot of time playing demon. I'm not a demon expert by any means. But I really enjoyed this build. I really enjoy playing ball with this build. I think it works out really good. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments about the build, leave them down below. Obviously, there will be some <laughs> probably demon mains or demon experts watching this video. You can tell me what is actually wrong in this build. But honestly, I think it's totally fine i don't see an issue with it at all and I, like i said i have been doing really well with this build um so you know going by that i thought it was worth doing a build uh, video about but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video leave me a like as well um it does greatly help out my channel and leave me a sub if you are new to the channel i do a lot of evil dead content primarily on the survivor side of things but i do like to cover that throughout the entire game the best i can and when i have time i do start to do demons sort of stuff as well so uh, thank you guys so much for watching i've been pixels my awesome videos i catch you guys in the next one